Today, I want to talk about my experience as a young activist. But first, I want to give you some context. So in 2017, Oxford Dictionary selected Yurquet as, as the word of the year. Yurquet is defined as the social, political, and social change created from the power of Yur. But why is it still that until last year we recognized this power etymologically and more important? Why is that still now in society we don't give the recognition that we deserve? Especially in cases like Pagland, Florida, when this past San Valentin, 17 kids died. And one of the first ones talking aloud was Emma Gonzalez, a student and a survivor. She was one of the first ones talking aloud about the guns control and regulations needed in the US. In order to answer to these questions, I want to tell you about my experience as a young activist in Ecuador, and also point out some of the stereotypes that had affected me as an activist and had affected us as teenagers. Everything started in 2014 with the Asunidos, a social movement that rise against the old extraction in all, one of the most biodiverse places on earth, Yasuni, in the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. For the first time, I felt the necessity to speak for those who couldn't. It was a matter that affected us as a generation and as a nation. But for the first time, I also felt undermined. My boss was not as heard as I wanted. But then, when I become 16, I realized that youth activism is not only a necessity. It's a key and essential part of the improvement of our society. And the way that I realized, I wanted anyone ever realize. So in Ecuador, hosting a party with 40 people or more is illegal. And fair enough, these environments are usually unsafe. So as a protective method, the police in my country created in a pen. Dina Pen is a branch of the police that focuses on teenagers' rights. And what they used to do is break into houses and arrest teenagers. And no one wanted to go there. It was a humiliated experience, and then you have to wait there until a responsible adult come and pick you up. And I grew up in a society where we were very stigmatized. We are these teenagers, only wanted to drink, only wanted to have fun, being a snowflakes in our own world. But then, one night, it was a Friday night, and a friend called me, and she invited me to one of these parties, and my mother didn't let me go. Um, so then I went back to sleep. Nothing happened. It was a normal fight, a normal weekend. But then next day, I woke up. There were like 10 missing calls in my phone. It was the same friend who called me yesterday, and she was crying, and she couldn't even talk. So then I went into internet. I opened my Facebook web page, and there were these black ribbons that you find when someone has died. So my first thought was maybe it's so a relative, someone close in her family. And then my heart stopped. It was Ali, a 16-year-old girl, a friend of mine. She was in the party last night as well. What happened is that around 10.30, a police car surrounded the, the house where the party was being happening, was happening. And of course, teenagers freaked out. No one wanted to face the police. So they started jumping walls and going into neighbors' houses. And Ali was particularly scared. It was a chaos. And trust me, I know the chaos because I, was, I has been there. As I told you before, Ali was particularly scared because that night she didn't have permission. So she did what others did. She jumped into the wall. She got to the other house. There is no way to go out. So she climbed a roof. Over there in the roof, she tried to run as fast as she could. She didn't realize that in the roof there was a crack. She fell down 14 meters. The same morning, I went to the funeral. It was a funeral like any other. An entire high school was there. We were around 200 people, teenagers, friends, parents, teachers. And at least we were not feeling alone in our sorrow. Ali's mom was there. I tried to give her my condolences, and she's crying. She held my hand. She couldn't talk, and me neither. So I went back home, and I opened Facebook again. And one of the first things that I see is that now what had happened is the whole new in such a small city. And then there are comments, especially adult comments, stigmatiz stigmatizing Ali and insulting her. 
that she was drinking, that she was high, that she was irresponsible, what kind of parents did she had. And I was feeling very angry and very insulted because they didn't know Ali. The same evening, I received a call. It was Ali's aunt, and she was angry as well. And she wanted Ali's friends to be part of the press conference held by the police, the chief of police. And suddenly, everything started. One friend called another friend, and another friend called another friend, and without realizing, we were more than 100 teenagers that, in that governmental building where the press conference was going to be held, what was going to be happening, and then everything exploded. The chief of police started talking and making the accusations, and teenagers were just so angry. They started bringing past the bands where police break into houses without any risk, without any trespassing order, and without realizing I was also feeling the anger and the sorrow of my peers. Then we understood that action was needed. The next weeks, we meet every day, and we end up with a demonstration. These are the pictures that you are seeing now is what happened in the governmental building. And by the end of the weekend, we hold a 2,000 people's demonstration, a silent walk to the governmental building, when we were walking for against the stigmatizations, the injustice and the fear. Because without realizing, we were having fear for an authority that should protect us. By the next week, the governor asked for another press conference, and this time he wanted to open spaces for you teenagers to have direct inputs in policy making and protocols that affect us. Before, I was being part of something kind of similar, that it was called the consultative councils. But in these councils, my voice was not really represented. I was just there to talk about my opinions, but I was not there for voting. The proposal of the governor was different. He wanted to have direct inputs in protocols, and not only that. He also wanted to open educational, educational protocols where we can learn about our constitutional rights. And not only that, provide spaces where we can bring, enjoy being young. Then everything changed. Society didn't stigmatize anymore. And more important, we as teenagers, we didn't feel fair. We feel powerful. Because it was all because of us. It was not adults telling us what to do. We were there for ourselves, for our friends, for our generations. Then, after all the protocols changed, I had to leave the country to come to UWC. And during the summer, I went back. I was really interested in the movement. But what I realized is that, again, adults were taking leading roles and undermining our voice. So it's not enough to have the space. We need to take action. We, as teenagers, we need to get involved, get aware, get educated. Because it's not the same to get inspired by an adult than to get inspired by someone of your own age. When you get educated and involved, you can be an inspiration for someone else. And for you adults, don't underestimate our voice. You have the experience that is needed. We have the energy. So why don't I encourage your sons, your daughters, your sisters, and your brothers to take action? Now we have all the information in the palm of our hands. But if we, if we get blinded by the, all the banalities of this century, then nothing is worth it. I would like to conclude saying that what happened to Ali should not happen to anyone ever again. Your activism is the first step. But it's upon us to give the step forward, not only for ourselves, for our generation, but also for the next ones. Thank you.